Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and I'm excited to bring you another episode absolutely free. This episode is one of many released every month, totaling over 80 episodes so far. Each one is meticulously digitally restored and stored in the cloud for your convenience, a process that incurs costs. To help cover these expenses, you might hear some advertisements throughout the episode. While we do retain the original commercials for historical authenticity, you may also encounter modern ads, which help keep the lights on. If you prefer an ad-free experience, we offer a couple options. You can listen to the episodes on YouTube, where they don't include the audio ads, although YouTube may provide their own ads on their platform. Alternatively, you can also support us by becoming a patron on our Patreon page. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash donate. Again, otrwesterns.com slash donate. I do want to emphasize that we are committed to providing this content to you for free, but also we have to be transparent about the financial realities to bringing this to you. To those of you who are already supporting us, we extend our heartfelt thanks. Your contributions make it possible for us to continue doing what we love. And as a final note, I did want to mention one last thing. If you are paying for a service, let's say like Audible, and you're listening to this show on that site, they do not provide any financial or monetary means to this podcast. We provide it to them as a way for you to be able to listen, but they don't help us in any way. So again, thank you to everybody who's already supporting. And those of you who want to support us in the future, I deeply appreciate it. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be the Lone Ranger. Original air date is May 21st, 1947. And the title is the wild horse. Thanks for listening. And let's get into it. Fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? In the kitchen of a small ranch house, Jim Fay sat at the table that his wife Mary had just cleared. He looked sad and dejected as he arranged some papers before him. 
Mary tried to be cheerful as she straightened up the room and talked to their young son, Tommy, who, as usual, was brimming with life and excitement. I think it's going to be fun living near the river. Could I get a boat, do you think? Oh, it's just a small stream, Tommy. I bet it's deep enough to swim in, though, ain't it? It isn't. Not ain't, dear. Well, then, isn't it? I don't know, Tommy. Now, maybe you'd better run outside for a while. Are those the papers that mean you're selling the ranch, Dad? Yes, son. If we're going to be farmers again, does that mean I can fill up the pony you promised me? I don't know, son. We won't need saddle horses on a farm. But, gee, Dad, you can't ride on plow horses. You said I could have a horse of my, of my own on my next birthday. I'd rather have a horse than anything in the world. And I can ride, too. Tommy, I told you not to bother your father. Go on out and watch for Mr. Shaver. He'll be along any minute now. Do you think he'll be riding Tornado? He's the best horse around here, everybody says. I saw him in town the other day, and he reared up on his hind legs right in front of Frisbee's store and pranced all over the street. Gosh, how I love to ride him. If you ever get to be a rider like Dave Shaver, you can take a chance like that. Even a horse like Tornado can't stand up against him. Run along now, Tommy. I'll let you know when I see him coming. Are you disappointed in me, Mary? I sure made a mess of trying to be a cattleman. Jim, don't talk like that. I never should have left Illinois. We had a good farm there, and I should have been contented. You're still a good farmer, Jim. What if you didn't succeed as a cattle rancher? That's no disgrace. At least you had the sense to sell while you still had something. That's good, rich bottom land down by the river, and you're a good farmer. We'll make a go of it. You'll see. There won't be much to start with. At least Dave Shaver's given me cash. It'll be enough to buy some plow horses and farm machinery and, and maybe some chickens. We'll get along, Jim. Here he comes, Dan. Here comes Mr. Sheep when he's riding tornado. You stay away from that horse, Tommy. He's dangerous. He's beautiful. I'll show him where to tie him. I've never seen a child so crazy about horses. Too bad we can't afford to get him. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Thanks, son. Maybe I'd better make some tea. Never mind. Dave isn't interested in tea. Hello, Dave. Come on in. How are you, Jim? Have a chair, Dave. Thanks. Hello, Mrs. Fay. Hello. How are you, Mr. Shaver? Uh, sit right here. Thanks. I've got all the papers ready. We've signed them. They're right here. I've got the cash right with me. I'm sorry about all this. Well, I suppose I just didn't know enough about cattle. I'm a farmer, I guess. What? It's Tommy. That horse. Where is he? What happened? Come on. He's there on the ground. Tommy. Back. Back, Torino. Someone ought to find him. Tommy. He's hurt bad, Mary. He must have tried to ride that horse. Oh, no. I'll ride to town with the doctor. You better get him right in the house. Steady. Get up there. <laughs> Don't cry, Mary. Doctor's taking care of him. Tommy will be all right. Why did he try to ride that terrible horse? I'm sure sorry about it, Mrs. Fay. It isn't your fault, Mr. Shaver. How is he, Doctor? You can go into him now, Mrs. Fay. He's conscious. Oh, my poor child. Well, Doc. Tommy's going to live, Jim, but... But what? I didn't want to tell you this in front of your wife, but I'm afraid Tommy's going to be crippled. What? Crippled? You mean a life? Oh, no. Doc... Later on, something may be done. An operation. I really can't say. I've done my best. I'm sorry, Jim. Thanks, Doc. Jim, with my horse, Tommy needs an operation. Let me take care of it. I've got plenty of money. It wasn't your fault, Dave. I'll have enough money by the time he's ready for the operation. Well, you stay here till Tommy's better. Stay as long as you like. I wish I could do something. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for getting the doctor so fast. Oh, if only Tommy hadn't been so crazy about horses. I'm afraid he'll never be a rider now. I know he won't. It's 
long as I live, he'll never go near a saddle horse again. I won't have one on the farm. I hate them. He'll never get near one again. The following months were hard ones for Jim and Mary Fay. Farm labor was scarce in this cattle country, and clearing the land of the new farm kept Jim working from dawn until sunset. It was a day late in summer when he came toward the house, just in time to see young Tommy disappearing over the hill toward the river valley. His face saddened as he watched the small figure hobbling along with the aid of a crutch. Mary came to the door. I've got your dinner ready, Jim. Come on in and wash up. Poor kid. Where's Tommy going? He asked me to pack a lunch for him again today. He took a book with him. He's done that about three times this week. I don't know where he goes. He seems to want to be alone, doesn't he? Yes, he's changed, Jim. He's not the same little boy anymore. Ever since... Now, Mary, don't cry. He'll be all right after a while. He just isn't used to people looking at him the way they do. But he'll get used to it. I... I wonder where he goes every day. It's rough country over that hill. The little gullies and ridges... But maybe we'd better not pry, Mary. It makes him happy to do it. Let's not bother. Tommy limped toward the place that he had found quite by accident. It was a small valley hidden between two steep ridges. He had followed a little stream between the narrow opening of rocks about five feet wide when he discovered the place. A sheer slope at the end of it prevented any other entrance to it. And the small valley was like a quiet cathedral, except for the gurgling stream that was fed by a spring on the slope. But today, as he entered between the rocks, he heard a different sound. It was the whinny of a horse. It's... it's a horse. Where is he? There he is. Why, he's hurt. What's wrong, old fellow? Why... It's your hind leg. You can't get up. Don't be afraid of me. I won't hurt you. You must have fallen off the ridge. Gee, what'll I do? I've got to get some help, poor fellow. It's so far back home. I've got to do it, though. I just got to. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, his Indian companion... We're riding west toward the Fay Farm when they heard a voice calling. Hey, help me! Help! Oh, 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 help! There's a young boy over on that ridge. Ah, make him sound like him in trouble. Come on, Toto. See what's wrong. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout. He's all alone. Maybe someone with him hurt. What's wrong, son? I'm so glad you're here. Oh, Silver. Oh, Silver. Oh, Silver. There's a horse hurt down there in the valley. If you follow me, I'll take you to him. Oh, wait. Better let me take you on my horse. Here, I'll help you up. Is he going to get better, do you think? Uh, I'm afraid that's about all we can do for him. His hind leg is badly sprained. We'll have to stay off it. Will he have to be tied up like that? I'm afraid so, son. He doesn't like it, but it's best for him. Do you live near here? Yes, I live over the hill. I'm Tommy Fay. Well, Tommy, I think you'd better get your father to take care of this colt. It's well worth saving. Ah, him mighty fine horse. He's beautiful. Uh, don't you think, I mean, couldn't I take care of him? You're going to need some help. That leg needs treatment. Your father will be pleased to think you found such a fine animal. He'll probably get a vet right out here from town. I... I want him so much, but... But he's your son. You found him. My father won't let me ride a horse or go near one. Gee, mister, couldn't you help me take care of him? You're you're so kind. Tommy, I noticed something when I picked you up. You're the first person I ever met who didn't ask me why I wear a mask. 
Were you too excited about this horse? I was excited about the horse, but that wasn't why I didn't ask. Didn't you think I was an outlaw? You were different. With me, I mean. Different? You didn't say anything about my crutch. Oh, I see. But I'll tell you about it. A horse drew me once, and that's why I'm crippled. And you still like horses? It hasn't made you afraid of them? No, sir. I'm not afraid of them. And I'd rather have one than anything else in the world. But it made my father hate them. If he finds out about this one, he, he might shoot it or something. Oh, please don't tell anybody he's here. Well, he must be. Huh? Now, maybe we come back tomorrow, huh? Bring medicine, fix, or... Yes, Tonto. It looks as if we're going to have to. Oh, thank you, sir. I'll come every day and talk to him. I think the first thing we'd better do is block up the entrance to this place. There's only one that near when we came through. That won't be hard. Come on, Tonto, let's get busy. Ah, he could plant his log. And, sir, you'll promise not to tell a soul? Not a soul, Tommy. This is our secret. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Continue our story. Every day, Tommy went down to his secret valley to feed and care for the lame colt. The Lone Ranger and Tonto took care of the injured leg, but the colt was nervous and frightened when they appeared. But he accepted Tommy, who fed him and brought him carrots and sugar and delicious things he had never tasted before. Finally, the day came when the Lone Ranger's task was done. You'll be standing on that leg tomorrow, Tommy. He's almost cured. Will he limp, do you think? Oh, he will for a while. Not after his leg is strong again. He'll be all right in a few weeks. <laughs> Makes him nervous to have us around, Tonto. Let's go. I'll walk to the barrier with you. All right, fine. Don't you think I'd better talk to your father, Tommy? About the cult, you mean? Yes. I think I could make him see things your way. Oh, please, sir. Not yet. I want to have him all to myself for just a little while. I'm going to call him White Star. On account of the star on his forehead. Do you like that name? It's a fine name, son. He'll probably be a one-man horse after this. You'll be the only one he'll trust. He knows me now. He pricks up his ears and whinnies when he hears my whistle. And lets me sit beside him and brush his coat. Here, let me boost you over this barrier. There you are. Silver's glad to see you. Oh, here's a halter I brought you for White Star. Oh, thanks. Will you be back again soon? There's nothing more we can do for your horse, Tommy. But we'll be back in a week or two to see how you're getting along. Maybe you'll be riding White Star by that time. Oh, leg get better fast now. There's only one thing I'm worried about. What's that, Tommy? I I don't know how I'll ever get up on his back. There's a trick you can teach him. I taught it to Silver. What is it? Watch. Down, Silver. Down, boy. Why, he's getting down. I could get right on his back without having to jump. All right, Silver. Go, boy. Oh, 
please tell me how to teach White Star to do that. All right, I'll tell you how, Tommy. But you must remember to be patient with him. It'll take a long time. Oh, I will, I will. The warm summer days were no longer lonely for Tommy. He and White Star spent them together in the hidden valley. White Star was strong again and trotted to the barrier when he heard the boys whistle. Hi there, fellow. I brought you an apple, but first you have to do your new trick. Down, White Star. Down, fellow. <laughs> this time you did it right away. You're the smartest horse in the world. Now, wait till I get on your back. <laughs> there. Now, up, fellow. There, we did it, White Star. We did it. It was almost a month later when Tonto and the Lone Ranger rode to the Hidden Valley to see Tommy. As they neared the entrance, they noticed that the barrier was gone. Tonto, look. The barrier's gone. Ah. Maybe horse stay here without being shut in. I wonder. Let's ride in and see if Tommy's here. I'll go first. The passage is narrow. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. I can't see White Star anywhere. He must have you. Look over there. That Tommy on ground. Oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh, Scout. Oh, Scout. Oh, Scout. Oh, Scout. Oh, You think maybe horse thrown? I hope not. Tommy, are you all right? Tommy, what's wrong? Are you hurt? No, he's gone. White Star, he ran away. Gone? How did he get out? He, he jumped the barrier. But barrier not there, it's gone. I know it. I took it down after he got out. He's been gone almost two weeks. I took it down because I thought maybe he'd want to come back. But I guess he doesn't. I guess he won't ever come back. Here, don't try it, Tommy. He may have come back when you were here. No, I've been here every day, waiting for him and whistling for him. I, I miss him so. I don't know why he ran away. Well, Tommy, you see, White Star is a wild horse. We're probably the first human beings that he's ever seen. And you're the only one he ever obeyed. He, he couldn't have liked me very well. Oh, yes, he did. But the urge for freedom was too strong. He probably went back to his herd. Then I'll, I'll never see him again. I'm afraid I can't promise that you will. But I will promise this. Tonto and I'll do everything we can to find him. And if we do, we'll bring him back to you. Four cow hands stood around the corral at Dave Shaver's ranch. A beautiful black horse stood in the center of the enclosure. It quivered with excitement and pawed the earth as Dave Shaver entered the corral prepared to ride it. The men were so excited that they didn't notice the masked man and the Indian who had stopped their horses some distance away and were watching. Hold that rope. I'm riding him right now. Hey, hey, hey. Look at that critter butt. Oh, look at him, sunfish. Ride him, Dave. Look out, he's dynamite. There goes Dave. Grab that horse, somebody. Open the gate. Get Dave out. You all right, Dave? Help me, Pete. Get up, Dave. Oh, I'm, I'm getting up. I'm not hurt. Come on, get out of this corral. Oh, that horse is a devil. You sure made a pretty art going through the air. Uh, <laughs> you better not try that again. That horse must have been raised on gunpowder and red pepper. I never saw a horse like it. I... Hey, look over there. An engine and a mask man. Well, where'd they come from? Watch them, boys. Right. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. It's the idea of the mask, stranger. Who are you? You can take your hands off your guns, boys. We just stopped to see the show. That's a mighty fine horse you have there in the corral. That's a nice one you're riding, mister. Would you like to do a little trading? No, this one isn't for sale. I thought you might like to sell that one, though. <laughs> You and he didn't seem to be getting along very well. <laughs> That's right. I'll say they didn't. That horse is poison. We captured him about a week ago. It's the wildest piece of horse flesh I've ever seen. Nobody can stay on him more than five seconds. Then you sell him to me? No, he's not for sale. Why don't you sell him? Here's your chance, Dave. What do you plan to do with him? 
That horse has made a laughing stock of me all over town. I'm fixing things so they'll stop laughing. There's a big rodeo next week, and I'm taking this horse to it. I'm putting up a $500 prize for anyone who can stay on him for half a minute. Wow, that's a lot of money. Well, that's a lot of horse. All the best riders in the country will be there. And they won't be able to resist trying for a prize like that. And after this black keg of fireworks fools all of them, maybe people will stop ragging me about him. That's very interesting. We'll see you at the rodeo, Dave. Come on, Silver. Get him up to the car. The most popular feature at the rodeo was the horse Dave Shaver called Spitfire. Throughout the day, rider after rider had tried for the $500 prize. People no longer made fun of Dave for being thrown by the horse that had thrown all the best riders in the territory. And Dave was in high spirits when the Lone Ranger approached him. Hello, Dave. Well, if it isn't the masked man again, even wearing that mask in public. Is your $500 offer still good? It sure is, stranger. Maybe that mask is a good idea. It'll hide your blushes when Spitfire sends you rolling in the dirt. <laughs> well... Are there any special rules about riding? <laughs> you can make your own terms, Masked Man. The only rule is nobody gets the money unless he stays on that critter for half a minute. That is, without being tied on. <laughs> Don't try it, mister. Here's another local gent who wants to dirty up his clothes. Yeah, that's right. I uh, want you to take the saddle off the horse. Let him run free in the arena. Why, so? Did you hear that? He's crazy. Why, you couldn't even catch him, let alone stay on him if you did. You said any turns, I think. Well, stranger, this should be fun. Take the saddle off, Spitfire Pete, and let him out of the chute. Right. You boys spread the word around. This is going to be good. <laughs> Spectators crowded eagerly around the fence that enclosed the arena as the black horse pranced out of the chute at one end. They watched the masked man expectantly, but he only waved at someone across the enclosure. There was a gasp of fear from the crowd as they saw an Indian lift a small boy over the fence, and suddenly there was an awed silence. The small figure hobbled forward on his crutch, and then the crowd heard a low whistle. The horse stopped suddenly, his ears pricked forward. Then the whistle sounded again. The horse quivered, then slowly walked toward the small boy, who stood with tears of joy running down his cheeks. White Star! White Star! It's really you! We're together again. Oh, I'm so glad. I've missed you so. Do you remember White Star? Do you remember your trick? Down, follow down. I want to get on your back. That's it, boy. Too amazed to cheer, the crowd watched with unbelieving eyes as the great horse walked gently, carrying the little boy who had left his crutch in the center of the enclosure. I can't believe it. That's the kid that was crippled by my horse tornado. That's Jim Fay's boy. Now, will you sell me the horse, Dave? Sell you that horse? I should say not. I wouldn't separate that horse and kid for a million dollars. <laughs> I thought you'd feel that way. Come on, masked man. We're going straight to Jim Fay right now. He wouldn't take charity from me. I wanted to give him money enough for Tommy's operation. But he's going to take $500 right now. His son won it, fair and square. Tommy stood in the corral of his father's farm beside White Star as he watched the Lone Ranger ride off in the twilight. There he goes, White Star. And maybe someday soon, my leg will be strong again. And we'll ride over the hill, just like the masked man and his big white horse.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day and thanks for listening.